Hey, what's going on guys? Skit Gaming here, and today I'm going to show you the right way to be a soup man in Blood and Iron. Step 1. Don't. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like down below. But seriously though, if you must be a soup man, don't bother everyone else with your business. Just keep to yourself and maybe people wouldn't hate you so much. Partisans. Believed to have spawned from the Chaotic Abyss, these odd soldiers don't conform to any rules of war or fighting style, but rather use a wide range of tools to win the day. Historically, partisans were irregulars, meaning that they were just people doing their own thing when the military came through and snatched them up for use in battle. This means that their weapons are usually whatever they could grab before they left the house. Here's a full list of weapons that partisans are capable of having. There's a random chance for any of these to be assigned to your two item slots, so there's no definite advantage or disadvantage with your gear. Many become partisans just for a chance at receiving an item unique to the class, such as a sledgehammer or scythe. For tips on using the weapons you might receive, I recommend looking at these videos. Picking the partisan class is like entering the lottery. You might get a trash combination like a pistol and a knife, or you could be the best equipped player on the field with, say, a rifle and a sledgehammer. The key is to be able to adapt to whatever gear you end up with, so if you're a newer player you might want to shy away from this class until you're more familiar with the weapons of Blood and Iron. People who main partisans are usually zany and unpredictable, adding a wild card aspect to any match. Musicians have played a role in war pretty much since its conception. By the time of the Napoleonic era, musicians served as a vital form of communication across large and often chaotic spaces. A drum, bugle, or fife could easily be picked out from the din of battle, so instruments were often used to set cadences when marching. Some armies would even use drums and bugles to synchronize the reloading process while fighting. The musician in question, most likely a drummer, was a very important part of a well-functioning regiment and usually stayed in a well-defended or safer spot during a battle, as not to needlessly cripple the communication structure of an army in the event he's incapacitated. Contrary to popular belief, young men were not enlisted as drummer boys if it could be helped. An older, experienced man was preferred due to the important nature of the job. In Blood and Iron, musicians usually serve a more direct role in combat. They give the reload speed buff when playing music, which shortens the time it takes a player to reload their gun. Who'd have thunk it? The buff only works when the musicians are playing music, suggesting that musicians should play a basic support role by staying near groups of infantry and playing tunes for them. However, musicians can often be observed taking up arms and charging into battle themselves when they could simply play music instead, which contributes to my hypothesis that musicians possess a natural hunger for violence. In my opinion, a musician could be a very valuable asset for a well-organized team, as long as he plays a support role in assisting with reloading. I will say it again, musicians are not meant to be the main vanguard, but rather a support role. We've all seen it. A group of musicians, often consisting of men from both sides of the conflict, come together to form a band. These bands are, in a tactical sense, stupid. However, I would recommend tolerating the band until the main enemy threat is dealt with. Once the only enemies are members of the band, dispatch them quickly and humanely. Firing squad is always a good route. If you yourself happen to be a band member, I would recommend leaving the band and helping your team out. The first and foremost, most important rule when being confronted by a musician is that you can not trust them. If you let one get too close, he's likely to attack you or your teammates when he sees an opening. So keep that in mind next time you're getting too friendly with them. That's all for this video guys, I hope this helps in your escapades. If you like historic war groups on Roblox, check out the Royal de France, linked in the description. They cover the 30 years war period in the 17th century, and I think they're pretty cool. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up with that special little button located below the viewer. If you aren't already a subscriber, you can show your support by becoming one. The button for that is also down below. Thanks so much for watching guys, Skit Gaming signing out. Goodbye.